ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೃಗ್ ದೃಶ್ಯ ವಿವೇಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಆರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಒನ್ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬುಕ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಪರೇಷನ್ although it seems simple it's not easy and the preparation is the same standard that's given in the beginning of vedanta sutra the commentary by shri pad shankar acharya and i refer you to that video here that basically one should be a sanyasi one should be separated from all ties to this body and this world now in the beginning of renunciation one has to follow so many rules it's just like the beginning of anything huh? when you first learn to play a musical instrument for example you have to learn all the scales and chords arpeggios and all the fingerings and the techniques and it may seem boring uh, it may seem like oh this is too many rules huh? but if one gets a good foundation in the basics then one can fly very high and it's the same with this advaita kevala advaita kevala means pure unmixed Advaita means non-duality. So this Drig Drishya Vivekaha is on the platform of Kevala Advaita, unmixed duality. But of course, when one first enters this realm, which is the very topmost level of the Vivarta Vada, those of you who have been following this channel know what I'm talking about. and uh, if you haven't you should go back and watch our earlier videos they explain the different levels the different vadas or views on the spiritual path <clears throat> so at the end of the vivarta vada the whole thing boils down to distinguishing between brahman and the creation and how do we do that well that's given in the 14th verse that everything has five qualities sat chit ananda nama rupa that is existence consciousness bliss or attractiveness name and form name and form belong to maya name and form are illusory why because they keep changing but the other three the existence consciousness bliss satchidananda belong to brahman now let's talk about brahman because i assume you already have understood the necessity of separating everything that we experience into these two categories the seer and the seen the drik and the drishya Uh, brahman and the world so if you have done this work which is quite a piece of work using the technique of neti neti not this not this not this uh, eventually you wind up facing the void because everything else has been eliminated up to and including the the universe and god and everything <laughs> what is there left only the void now the void is a very special type of uh space it's not ordinary space time 
like you find in this universe. Shunya, shunyata, means a space where there is no possibility of becoming. So that means there is no dimension, no direction, no distance, no movement, no change, no time. There's nothing that underlies or underpins the whole cosmic creation is there in the void. So there's no possibility of anything happening or of anything even existing. The void is like a single point. A point has no dimension and it has no location. Why? Because when considered by itself, it can't be compared with anything else. And the way we get location is by comparison. In the same way, there's no movement, no change, etc., no qualities. So every point in the void is exactly the same as every other point. That means, for all practical purposes, <laughs> it's nowhere. It's nothing. Really nothing. Not just empty space. Because in space, something can always happen. But in the void, nothing can happen. There's no place for it to happen. There's no there there, <laughs> to coin a phrase. Because there is no dimension and no space and no boundaries. No way you can say, this is here and that is there. Everywhere you go, it's just the same. So actually, you can't go anywhere. And there's nothing that can change either. So if, by the process of elimination, you find yourself in the void, uh, which is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth jhana of the Buddha, then you realize that actually there isn't exactly nothing there. Because <laughs> who is it who is aware of the void? Who is seeing the void? The seer, the drik. Now it so happens in the void there's no drushya, there's no, nothing to be seen. So this is the ultimate end of this process of Drig Drishya Viveka. When one winds up in the void, then the only place you can go from there is the all-pervading consciousness. So this is Chit, the principal quality of Brahman. And, of course, it's full of ananda, or bliss, because there's nothing to create suffering and nothing to experience it. Only pure consciousness. So, <laughs> when one reaches this point, it doesn't matter anymore if one is percipient or non-percipient, whether one is conscious or non-conscious. There's nothing to be conscious of. Still, one is aware that one is aware. And that is the symptom of Brahma. So you see, these are very, very advanced concepts and very, very rare experiences that take years and years of steady work and cultivation to even approach. One has to be very pure. One has to be totally dedicated. One has to be without distractions. And one has to be very learned in metaphysics. So all of these qualities and activities of meditation bring one to the stage of being in the void and then recognizing that I am Brahman. I am the seer, 
and there is no other seer. Therefore, I see everything. I am aware of everything. Just like one point of the void is indistinguishable from any other point. In the same way, one atom of consciousness is indistinguishable from any other atom of consciousness. Not that consciousness has atoms, but I'm just <laughs> trying to make an example. There's no way to say this consciousness or that consciousness because they're all the same. The only differences are in the contents of consciousness. And that's part of the relative world when this consciousness is reflected in the mind and the senses. But that's not original consciousness. That's not pure consciousness. That's conditioned, impure, mundane, derivative consciousness. It's conditioned because it's limited by the idea that I am a body, I am an individual. And it's looking through these different media called senses. <clears throat> and so the senses also color and condition the perceptions. So because of these limitations, one thinks, oh, I am not the supreme. I am subject to birth and death. I am sinful. I have karma and so many things. I'm subject to cause and effect. So because of this, one thinks, I am not enlightened. <laughs> but this is only possible from the point of view of, I am this body, I am this mind. As soon as one successfully distinguishes between the seer and the seen, this discrimination also disappears. It's like when we talk about Brahman, we talk about Sat Chit Ananda. But again, these are only visible from the relative platform, not from the absolute. From the absolute, there is no Sat Chit Ananda because there's no Asat, Nischit, or Nirananda to compare it to. <laughs> there's no boundaries. So no differences, see? And this is the absolute level. This is the level of Ajatavada. And this process of Drig Drishya Viveka leads precisely to that final ultimate stage. That's why it's the highest teaching that we are presenting or that anyone could present <laughs> because it leads directly, uh, one step process, to the highest. So that's why I said back in the beginning that this gives the highest bliss. This process of distinguishing the seer from the seen, if taken to its ultimate conclusion. So now we have given this teaching, this very wonderful and powerful teaching. Now it's up to you to do the work, huh? like the guy next door here, hammering on his house. <laughs> it's up to you to do the work. It's hard. You have to get up early in the morning, take a bath, sit down, meditate, clear the mind of all thoughts. You know, it's hard work. It takes a long time. It's been since my first glimpse of Brahman, which was basically a blessing, a gift from the goddess in 1984. It's been what, 36 years almost? My God. So for me to walk this path and go through all the different stages has really taken my whole life. But I don't regret a single day of it. I don't regret all the hardships or the obstacles. I don't regret the people's misunderstanding me and trying to find fault with my radical methods because they worked. <laughs> they got me to this point somehow or other. I'm not going to claim to be all-knowing. I'm not going to claim 
to be enlightened because that's ridiculous. <laughs> From this point of view, everything is enlightened. Everyone is enlightened. They just don't realize it. <laughs> They're covered. So our job, our thankless task, <laughs> is to assist and encourage you to remove those blinders, to remove those coverings, and experience the naked truth that's underneath them and the tremendous uh, bliss and well-being of realization of Brahman. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>